Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be doing an updated guide on the best PDWs available in Battlefield 4. Many things have changed to the PDWs overall, making them slightly more viable weapons, and we have some new contenders since my first guide on PDWs. Starting off, I'd like to take a look at the MPX. This thing gets closer to carbine-like performance than any other PDW in the game. In fact, this weapon compares to something like the ACWR the most in terms of performance. It has a little bit more recoil and less aiming down sight accuracy, but it makes up for it in hip fire performance. So basically, if you're running with the ACWR and you're thinking, you know what, I would trade some of the ADS accuracy on this weapon for some hip fire accuracy, well, that's the MPX for you. Now, to be perfectly fair, it's not a full on comparison there. The MPX does suffer a lot in the muzzle velocity department, so its ranged effectiveness is going to be reduced quite a bit, uh, but it does make it a prime candidate for using suppressors. So if you want to move around the map stealthily, which I highly recommend, then you can put a suppressor on the MPX and just be an absolute ninja with this thing. I would recommend using either an angled grip or an ergo grip for this weapon. Ergo grip if you like to move and shoot, angled grip if you want to try and work on your ADS accuracy a little bit more. Also, laser sight will definitely come in handy for that hip fire, and I highly recommend running one that you can toggle on and off. The MPX is definitely a contender for the king, and another weapon that shares many of the same carbine-like characteristics is the PDWR. And although it shoots 100 rounds per minute slower than the MPX, it makes up for it in terms of its recoil control and its hip fire accuracy. It's got incredible hip fire accuracy. Throw laser sight on this thing, and you really don't need to aim down sight. You can use it as an assistant, but for the most part, you're going to be able to hip fire people in close to medium range, no problem with this weapon and that is going to give you a huge timing advantage over your competition. Also, it has some of the better muzzle velocity for a PDW out there, 460 meters per second. Not necessarily impressive when compared to any other weapon classes, but it still gives this gun so much more versatility than most of the other PDWs out there. You can ADS at medium range, you can hip fire at medium range, and you can handle yourself in close quarters, though you might want to go for those headshots to down people even quicker. The gun already has a built-in grip option so we don't really have any sort of customization options here other than a laser sight which I highly recommend. Get one that you can toggle on and off instead of the flashlight laser light combo. With the new prevalence of smoke grenades in the game laser sights are not always an ideal option to have on your weapon so be sure to turn them off whenever going through smoke. Some of the downsides of this gun are that it doesn't have a very fast reload speed. 2.5 seconds is not necessarily long but it's also not incredibly fast so you will have to time your reloads well or run with a powerful sidearm that you are confident with. Without question, this is one of my most consistent PDWRs. I feel confident in most situations. It is not going to handle nicely at long range, nor will any PDW for that matter. You really have to know what your guns are built for, and instead of wasting ammunition at those longer ranges, you should really try and close the distance to your target and take them out at medium or close range. Now, the PDWR shares the title for best hipfire accuracy with a few other guns, one of those is the P90. Not only does the P90 have an incredibly low hipfire accuracy, just like the PDWR, but it also outdoes it in the recoil department. So you're going to have great hipfire accuracy and not a lot of trouble staying on target. Not to mention a 50 round magazine backing you up never hurts. However, the P90 starts to adapt uh, the low caliber characteristics of some of the other PDWs out there, and it doesn't do a massive amount of damage per shot. It does make up for this in the rate of fire department, 900 rounds per minute, 21 damage maximum. In close quarters, this is extremely lethal. You can do a huge amount of damage in very close quarter combat, but as soon as you start to reach out and range a little bit, that's where the P90 starts to lack a bit. Again, its hit fire accuracy is incredible, and you can take people out at medium range, it's just not quite as ideal for it. It does, however, have pretty good muzzle velocity, though since I don't really like to use it at medium range, I'll generally slap a suppressor on here for some stealthy CQB combat. And again, we'll be putting a laser sight on here pretty much on every PDW in the game. If you haven't noticed that trend yet, PDWs have great hipfire accuracy. You want to improve this as much as you can. Laser sights help out that way. 
you don't have to use laser sights with PDWs, but I'd recommend practicing with them because it will help you out if you really don't want an ADS. Now, when Battlefield first came out, this weapon here, the CZ-3A1, was my favorite. It later got overshadowed by the MPX, but it is still a very powerful weapon and something you don't want to underestimate on the battlefield. It's got a thousand round per minute rate of fire, making it the best Swiss cheese maker on the battlefield. Now, before this weapon got a nerf, it was without question the best PDW in close quarter combat. It is now not necessarily without question the best PDW in close quarter combat, but you'd be hard to beat it. The rate of fire, the reload speed of 1.9 seconds is just so freaking hard to beat. The main problem with this weapon is its insane recoil, making it pretty much unviable for medium or longer range combat. I have to put an angled grip on this weapon because it has a three times first shot recoil. And I also put a compensator on here because the side to side recoil is absolutely ridiculous. So just to control the recoil on this gun, we have to do quite a bit and it's going to affect this weapon's performance at medium range significantly, which is why I usually switch to the rocket launcher. Let's take a look at the MP7, one of my favorite PDW from Battlefield 3. It was so much fun to throw this on the assault class or even the support class and throw down those ammo packs and just spray and pray all day long. Now PDWs are relegated to the engineer so you can no longer do that. The MP7 though is still a very good competitive PDW. Nearly on par with the CZ-3A1's insane rate of fire, this thing shoots 950 rounds per minute. It only does 20 damage maximum, so it's a more impressive sounding number, but when you add up the DPS, it's not necessarily king of the hill in any category. Also, that 20 damage maximum is not going to do you any favors if somebody's running the defensive perk. Your 5-shot kill is probably going to become a 6-shot kill in extreme close quarters, and anything beyond that, it's easily going to turn into a 7 or 8-shot kill. And and luckily you have a magazine to back this up of 40 rounds per mag with an all right reload of 2.4 seconds. But ultimately the MP7 I feel just kind of lacks a little bit in the DPS department to make it as effective as I want it to be. Which is unfortunate because the MP7 is such a cool freaking gun. I think it could use a little bit of a damage upgrade. I mean there's so many ways to balance PDWs in this game. I just feel like the MP7 could use a little bit more love. Its muzzle velocity is not important. 420 meters per second isn't going to do you many favors so I usually slap a suppressor on here and that'll allow you to sneak around the map like a ninja. It already has a built-in grip so in many ways you could kind of think of this gun as sort of like a P90 with slightly better ADS accuracy and slightly worse hipfire accuracy but it doesn't really give you any reasons to use this that much. I would just use the P90 over the MP7 for the most part. Now let's take a look at another gun that has a fat magazine. The CBJ MS has the that nice big drum magazine on the bottom 50 rounds I always think of it as an Uzi with a drum mag which is kind of a cool concept this thing is fun to run with I don't know if it's contender for the best PDW out there but it is a very easy to shoot weapon highly accurate not a lot of recoil decent muzzle velocity it's going to be a good gun to use for just general purpose combat it also has a surprising amount of reach in medium range combat as its damage doesn't drop off until 20 meters so you're going to be doing 22.5 damage per shot all the way up to 20 meters so you can still get that five shot kill in close to medium range combat no problem it does lack though in the rate of fire department 700 rounds per minute is not going to do you any favors um, and it's really more of a good sneak around weapon or play with some teammates and support them in sort of a medium range role sadly you can't use this with the support classes that would be a lot of fun uh, it's a fun gun to run with but best when you're not dealing with straight on damage exchange because this one is not going to win. Let's take a quick look at the UMP9. This gun suffers in the same way that the CBJ MS does in terms of its damage output. 700 round per minute rate of fire, 22.5 damage maximum. It's in the same department as the CBJ MS for DPS, but it has incredible accuracy and some of the lowest recoil in the game. Hip fire or aiming down sights, you are good to go with this weapon. And if you need to reload quickly, it's got a 1.85 second reload very versatile gun very easy to use and get into it's not going to win those dps fights but if you're a marksman and you can go for those headshots you can nail quite a few of them because this thing just doesn't recoil and i'll also briefly mention the ump 45 in relation to the ump 9 it's probably the more popular and well-known ump but uh, because of its slow rate of fire and higher caliber
caliber round, I just find it to be not that much different and slightly less useful than the UMP9. All right, let's take a look at the highest damaging PDW in the game. In Battlefield 3, the AS Val was a god gun. That thing was amazing. In Battlefield 4, it's had its ups and downs. Right now, it's sort of in a medium area, a gray area. For me, I don't particularly like it. It does insane damage, as I mentioned before. 900 round per minute rate of fire, but a 27 damage maximum. So you're going to get a four-shot kill in CQB with 900 rounds per minute. That's absolutely insane. You're going to out-damage most guns in the game with this and it's got that built-in suppressor so you can be sneaky beaky and it's got a 1.95 second reload making it an absolute close quarter beast i like to put an angled grip on here because it does have a 2.5 first shot multiplier and the recoil is a little bit up there so you want to tame that first shot recoil so that your follow-up shots can be on target uh, the thing i don't like about this weapon is it's relegated to 300 meter per second muzzle velocity making it a very hard gun to track moving targets with and hit medium range targets so it's incredible in close quarter combat but not much else now there's a few more pdws but i haven't mentioned them here because i don't think they got close enough to making the top tier performers for pdws this is an interesting category of weapon because most of them are relegated to such close quarter combat to the point where you may as well be using a pump action shotgun instead of most of them and again i have to use versatility as one of the defining factors here because if the gun is just purely good at cqb combat then there's just simply no reason to use them over say a pump action shotgun that can one shot people and without question one of the most powerful and easiest to get into pdws i'll call it the gateway pdw is the mpx if you're used to carbines or assault rifles this one has got decent ads accuracy um, and it performs most similarly to other carbines out there it's an incredibly good gun you can use a suppressor on it or not it has decent hip fire accuracy so it can kind of get you in the mindset of using more and more hip fire uh, which is what pdws are really good at once you get comfortable with using hip fire more frequently and taking advantage of it you may get more versatility out of the pdwr that's pretty much the camp i'm in right now i love the pdwr you don't have to aim down sight with it and you get that extra millisecond advantage of your opponent because you're not required to ads when engaging in combat it's an excellent weapon again has sort of a similar damage model to carbines out there and it performs very well at medium range even when you're not aiming down sight and this is what saves it in close quarter combat when you start to go up against 750 round per minute rate of fire assault rifles like the m416 or 800 round per minute rate of fire assault rifles you can out damage them because you're not required to ads when you're in extreme cqb at medium range you start to drop off a little bit but it's still a fun little pdw the only problem again with this weapon category is that you're relegated to the engineer and engineers generally speaking are an ideal class for using on bigger more vehicle oriented maps in which case you're not going to have as big a need for close quarter weapons so it's hard to argue for using a pdw over carbines but if you really want to i highly recommend the mpx and the pdwr and if you just want to just pure go hip fire all day long and wreck people the p90 is a good choice as well it just doesn't have as many range options anyway i hope this video helps you guys figure out what kind of pdws you want to mess around with and how to outfit them properly as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you next time this is level cap signing off